Now, this picture is a little bit difficult to analyze in detail because you know, the magnetic uh, dipole field is complicated. And so um, let me give you a simpler picture um, that I don't have any demo for. But it's a simpler picture to analyze. Uh, let's just see um, that in this simpler picture, both Faraday's law and uh, motion-induced voltage gives you the exact same result. So this is the classic uh, picture involving this. So um, let me imagine a field um, or a space uh, that's a field with magnetic field. Sorry, too many fields. Um, let me draw it. So this is what I'm imagining. I have magnetic field. Uh, let's say it's coming out of the board. Um, I have magnetic field coming out of the board, but Here's a something a little bit special about this. There's an abrupt change. Uh, there's a boundary. So to the right hand side here, the magnetic field is some you know, constant value. Let me call it P not G hat. So our axis would be x, y, and g. Yep. So the right hand, right hand side of this boundary, you have this uniform magnetic field. The left hand side of the boundary, you have um, no magnetic field. So left hand side of the boundary, your magnetic field is zero. Good? So this is what I want you to imagine. Imagine that I have a, a conducting loop. Um, let me make this easy for myself. Conducting loop of a uh, square shape or uh, rectangular shape. Let's say I have a conducting loop that's uh, of, um, of some width. So of some width W and of some, I guess the way I'm drawing it looks like height H. Yeah. And uh, this conducting loop is moving. It's uh, moving at some speed v naught. And uh, we are just going to say, for the purpose of this initial discussion, that somebody is uh, making sure that this loop is moving at this speed. Good? All right. Um, so what do you think should happen with this conducting loop? There's a, there should be movement of charge induced in it, yeah. So, um, so, you know, let's look at all these segments. Everything that's out here, there's nothing happening to the charges, right? Um, because they are uh, outside the magnetic field. So the region that would be interesting to look at is this region. The region that's uh, inside the magnetic field here and here, and this region here. Call it regions one, two, three. In regions one and two, in what direction are the charges being pushed to? Let, let's once again imagine that those are positive charges. What direction are they being pushed? So in region one, um, V naught uh, cross B, so downward, right? So there's a force on the charges that's pushing it downward. Okay, that's not going to do anything. I mean, it might yeah, that's not really going to do anything. Um, and in region two, it's the same thing. For you know, cross B, um, downward. All right, so you know, the charges might accumulate on one side of the wire, but beyond that, nothing will really happen. Uh, what about region three? It's still downward. So the difference here is that when you have downward uh, V cross B, then this will act like an electric field, right? So what you have is if you imagine a path that's going along this conducting loop, then I have this amount of path length here, which will at every point along this path will be this value of V cross B, or uh, with this value of V naught 
times b because uh, times b naught because they are perpendicular, uniform, same value throughout, right? So, um, so the effect of this is going to get added up over this entire length. So if you calculate this, you know the line integral, if you want to call it um, v naught b naught times dl. Um, this is the motional, uh, uh, motion induced voltage. There's a voltage difference from here to here. Um, so I guess uh, this must be a, sorry, I keep forgetting which is lower and which, well, this is the direction that the charges are moving. The charges are moving this way, it'll push the charges here, so there'll be a loop current induced in this whole thing. So you could say, um, this is what you can end up saying that we can compare to the other thing later, that when you look at, sorry, I'm trying to pick the right color, used too many. Um, when you look at this, uh, when you imagine going around this loop, as you go around this loop, there's a voltage difference of V naught, P naught, times the line integral, that sounds like the H. So there's a voltage difference of V naught, P naught, H. So all I have to give you now is uh, what is the resistance of the wire, then you know, take the voltage, divide by the resistance, that'll give you the current. Okay? Good, everyone okay with that? So that's just using this concept of motion-induced voltage. Once again, no new laws, something that you already know. Now what I want to demonstrate is, do we get the same result using Faraday's law? Well, let's give it a try. So um, this would be how the, this picture is will be changing. So before, um, this is the picture that I was trying to sketch, that um, imagine this oscilloscope is the region with the magnetic field. Then what I was describing was this loop moving from right to uh, left to right, right? And now for, for the purpose of applying Faraday's law, what I want to say is, well, maybe it doesn't move that way. Uh, maybe I'm in the reference frame of this loop, and it's this region that's moving. So, so for this uh, change the picture, this is what you have to imagine. We have to imagine that, um, what color, uh, let's use purple. Um, we have to imagine that, okay, the loop is not moving. The loop is stationary. Um, instead, this boundary is moving to left at speed v naught, right? So if you are still sticking to Lorentz force law, that doesn't give you anything because there's nothing in this loop that's moving. The 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 sort of the amount of region of space that's filled with the magnetic field is changing. A moment later, this boundary would move up here. And you know there will be additional region of magnetic field, but the velocity of physical object is zero. So I want to get this result that the induced voltage inside the loop is still V naught, P naught, H. Let's see if uh, Faraday's law gives us that. So um, for the for the time being, let's just focus on the magnitudes. That way I can look at magnitude of the induced voltage is equal to magnitude of the rate of change of the magnetic field, uh, magnetic flux. Good. Let me write down the magnetic flux, um, an expression for magnetic flux. Um, guess I can do it this way. Uh, let me give a, a, a name a parameter. So this uh, distance or oh, this portion of the width that's filled with the magnetic field, I'm going to call that x. Then magnetic flux at the very basic level, it's the magnetic field times the area. I mean, you know, there's a whole dot product for you to remember and think about, but here the geometry is simple. Magnetic field comes out of the board, perpendicular to this plane, so this B dot DA business, it's just the magnetic field magnitude times the magnitude of the area. So, all right, um, so for the calculation here, it's not the area of the entire loop that I'm interested in, 
it's the area of the, this portion of the loop that I'm interested in. So I can say, all right, that area is the height h times x. Okay? So the magnetic flux, on, I can write it down as a function of x. It'll be magnitude of the magnetic field, b naught, times this area here, h times x. All right. So what uh, Faraday's law tells us is that induced voltage is equal to um, this thing or the t rate of change of this thing if you are looking at the absolute value. That's the rate of change of the magnetic flux. You know what? I have an analytical expression. I think I can try taking this derivative. Okay. So I'm going to try to take the time derivative of this entire expression here. B naught h x. Any of these parameters a function of time? B naught a function of time? No. H a function of time? No. What about x? Yeah, the region of space that's filling up, it's going to increase as a function of time. So, all right, let's write it out. It'll be B naught H times rate of change of X. Well, I think I have that. This is my um, dx dt, right? That's how fast this boundary is moving. So, all of that, I get B naught times H times V naught. So this is the magnitude of induced voltage that Faraday's law gives you. Compare it to this, oh, it's the same voltage. Same magnitude anyway. 